why would you ever use your real name online? I want you to think about that for a while. Really try to come up with a reason. And please do tell me in the comments, because I can think of innumerable reasons why you should not use your real name online. In fact, there are many more reasons to not use your real name, especially when you're dealing with crypto, than I will have time for in this video, which is already way too long. And so far, I've only heard one single exception to the rule. But I'll get to that later. First, let's look at where the call for using real names online began, because it's actually kind of a recent thing that came with Facebook. And before Facebook, on all the other social medias that came before it, like MySpace, Friendster, High Five, MSN, IRC, ICQ, or even back to the glory days of BBSs, everybody always used a nickname. So if uh, once in a blue moon you bumped into someone who had not gotten the memo and actually registered by the real name, you knew that you were chatting with someone that most probably was not quite right in the head, so it was best to just stay away from them. And while Facebook is still pretty much the only platform that has this weird rule, they have somehow convinced the whole generation that using real names is a good idea, albeit for uh, varying reasons, depending on who you talk to. Some will say that you need to use your real name so that your friends can find you online. But you don't, because people were connecting with friends all the time before Facebook, and there was no problem finding each other. In fact, social platforms were actually quite a bit more fun when you connected with the people you wanted to be connected to, as opposed to that old creepy classmate who you had totally forgotten existed before they sent you a friend request out of nowhere. But another reason to why some people claim it's important to use your real name online is because you gotta be able to be held accountable for what you say, and if anyone anonymous should partake in a discussion, they are not to be trusted. But that's just a silly fallacy from someone who are obviously out of arguments of their own, similar to how a grammar Nazi will reach for the only thing they are able to counter with. Oh look, you made a typo, I am so much better than you. And also the people who say you gotta be able to be held accountable in discussions online by using your real name have obviously never heard about Reddit. You know, that gigantic debating site with millions of active users, which is affectionately referred to as the front page of the internet? Yeah, you know, that place where nobody uses their real name, and still the debates goes on. And it's the same with Twitter and Snapchat and TikTok and tons of other platforms where people don't use their real names. Because the indisputable fact is that if someone makes a great argument, then that doesn't change its meaning just because the person who wrote it is using a nickname. In fact, it could be argued that the opinions carry more weight on their own when they cannot be connected to someone you might have prejudice against. So if it's said by someone anonymous, then you must take the argument as is and focus your attention on what is actually being said, as opposed to dig up a lot of dirt on whoever is saying it, as is so often the case on Facebook. And using a nickname in online discussions actually offers a slight form of protection against harassment too. Because if someone gets angry online and they say to a user called, uh, I don't know, X909UUT that you're a silly idiot and you should just kill yourself, then it comes off as a stupid remark. But if you say the exact same thing about Frederick Nielsen who lives at Cherry Street 15 in Bergen, it's instantly more serious. And this threat works the other way too, as using your real name also comes with a whole load of self-censorship and keeps people from voicing their opinion. And now, I don't use my real name on Facebook, and I post all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, funny memes and stupid stuff, just like I've been doing for the last 25-30 uh, years of online living. And I've lost count of how many people have told me in private that they would love to be able to post the kinds of stuff I do, but they live in constant fear of having their words used against them. And several have even said that they are afraid to just click like on opinion pieces they agree with, all because they're registered under their real name. And they're just terrified of what strangers out there might be able to dig up about them. But even though I use a nickname online, it's not like it's impossible to find out who I am. People have figured it out before and one guy even called me up on my personal phone number because he wanted to set me straight about a thing or two I'd written online. 
And uh, let me tell you, it was extremely unpleasant to know that someone I have never met would go to this length just to track me down. Even more so because he didn't actually understand at all that he had crossed a very scary line. And there was no way for me to know if he wasn't satisfied with talking to me on the phone, would he find out where I live and uh, look up where I work and uh, visit my family? I have no idea who this guy was or what he was capable of, so it was actually quite scary. But that's all beside the point, because the point is that there is absolutely no reason why you should want to share your real name online in the first place. Just like you don't want anyone to get a hold of your social security number, or read your diary, or check your bank transcripts, analyze your medical history, or have your fingerprints stored on their hard drive. There's absolutely no reason why you'd want total strangers to know how you spend time online either. But then of course, some people like to make the I've got nothing to hide claim, which is easily disproven with a simple question. Do you close the door when you go to the bathroom? <laughs> of course you do. And the reason why you do that is not because you have something else in your pants than everybody else, but it's because you have a need for privacy. It's just basic human nature. So if someone googles your name, you don't want them to find all the silly things you said in meaningless debates, just like you don't want them to see what kind of porn you watched. And people do google you, believe you me. You've probably been googled a whole bunch of times and what people have found might very well have had huge impact on your life where you've missed out on a whole bunch of opportunities without you yourself ever finding out about it. And the most obvious example to why someone would google you is of course when you're applying for a job. And then there's no reason why they should find all those silly drunken photos you took when you were celebrating five years ago or that time you made a comment which some people found offensive ten years later. Yeah, that seems to be happening a lot lately. Or some people might google you when you're trying to secure a loan. Or when you want to rent an apartment and start studying, join a commune, whatever. I have personally been responsible for hiring people at a mere bar. And let me tell you, we googled all the people we seriously considered for the position. And some of what we found online actually made the selection process much easier. So oftentimes, it's not so much a matter of others who are trying to get you online, as it is you who is making your own life difficult by limiting your chances through what you've shared. Because the internet has perfect memory, and it's not very forgiving if you should happen to change your mind about that uh, silly political discussion that got so heated some eight years ago. However, then there are of course those who claim that people who use nicknames online are just being paranoid and that they should all take off their tinfoil hats. But the fact is that there's countless examples of people who have gotten in a lot of trouble from using their real name online, even if they didn't say or do anything at all. And here in Norway there was a joke group on Facebook which focused on edgy humor, which suddenly became the pet peeve of the media and had members being hounded by do-gooders who contacted people's jobs and family just to let them know about the nasty joke that was told in the group that your nephew is a member of. And people actually lost their jobs because of that, which proves that there are many online who will go to rather extreme lengths just to hurt strangers. And that's still just the tip of the iceberg, because then you also have things like swatting. For those who might not know, swatting is basically making a prank call to the police to say that someone has a bomb in their house or something like that, just so that the SWAT team will go out in full force to the address. And this actually happens more often than you think, and there's ample videos of it right here on YouTube, which shows live streamers being swatted as they play online games. And not too long ago, there was even a guy who was arrested for orchestrating several hundred of such swatting schemes. But that's still not the worst you're susceptible yourself to by using a real name. Because supposedly there's also been incidents where someone has gotten so mad at someone online that they have gone to the dark web and bought the very worst kind of illegal videos there is just to send it to some stranger's address before calling the police and telling them about it. And if that ever happens to you and you receive all this disgusting material in your mail addressed to your name, then it doesn't matter how much you claim it, I have no idea who sent this to me, because the damage is already done. And then of course there's also the issue of government surveillance. Now Snowden already proved that the American government is spying on us all through a whole range of illicit methods. And it would be naive to think that America is alone in doing this. So it's not so much a question of if you're being spied upon, as it is how often and from how many. 
because it's not only governments doing the spying either, as shown in the giant scandal with Cambridge Analytica, which is just one out of many similar incidents, where your information had been leaked and sold to all kinds of nefarious companies. And if you think that these companies only know some basic information about you, like your name and birth date, then think again, because they actually collect much more info about you than you would ever believe. Stuff like what music you like, what products you're interested in, where you stand politically, your religion, sexual preference, etc. The list is long and insane, and you can actually check just what they know about you yourself by going to this address. And if it's not bad enough that they have this long list of all the stuff you like, they also have an even longer list of all the stuff you don't like. And checking this can be quite scary because oftentimes you'll find out things about yourself that you did not know. And this is also getting to the core of the issue, as the whole concept of telling people to use their real name has nothing to do about being held accountable or anything like that, but it's actually just an excuse from those who make a lot of money from selling your personal information. So even though using a nickname doesn't protect you against this directly, it does make it a little bit more hidden. So that instead of advertisers having a file with your name and everything you like and dislike, they instead have a file with a silly nickname, which is essentially useless to them. And this is still just talking about all the stuff that's kinda sorta legal. But there's also been countless times when Facebook has been hacked and all sorts of private information has been hijacked and sold in huge databases on the dark web. This happens every other week or so and you can check if you've been affected by this yourself by going to this address. And then you might wonder, well, uh, who uses these uh, databases? Well, scammers, that's who. And everybody will probably be familiar with the typical Indian person who claims to be calling from Microsoft, but that's just a fraction of it. There's a huge industry of scammers who will utilize anything they can just to steal people's money. And they are successful at it too, much thanks to how careless people are online with their personal information. So when you're dealing with crypto, it's all the more important to do become a little paranoid and protect your identity. Because when you have a lot of money stored digitally, that is a really strong incentive for all the hackers in the world to try to break into your accounts. And there has been countless incidents of people getting hacked, extorted or even tortured just because someone had read that they supposedly owned a bunch of crypto. There was an incident in Sweden not long ago where someone had their house broken into and uh, held at gunpoint just to get their Bitcoin. And then there was the crypto trader in the Netherlands who was waterboarded and tortured with a power drill. And even though these extreme examples are few and far between, they do happen. But still, putting all those violent, dangerous threats aside, let's not forget that this whole crypto industry actually stems from a certain anonymous person who goes by Satoshi Nakamoto. And people still don't know who that is some 12 years later. And yet, this anonymous person has been the springboard for the largest change in society since the invention of the internet. So to sum it up, using your real name online will put you in a lot of dangerous situations and quite possibly create a whole range of problems for yourself, which are all completely unnecessary. Anonymity is about taking control over your own life and not be at the mercy of censorship, hackers and ad companies, police, governments and all the other crazy people out there. Because the right to privacy is a crucial part of a democracy and without it we are well on our way to a police state. However, there is one exception. And that is if you are creating something that you actually want people to find and associate with your name. An example is if you have a small business, like you're a plumber or you're a writer or a musician or a painter or even a YouTuber trying to promote yourself as a brand name. Then it is okay to use your real name, even though a lot of people prefer to use pseudonyms then as well. But if you do use your real name, do it only for that part of your life and set up alternate profiles with nicknames for all the other things you do online. And that's all I have for you today, my cryptic friends. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and do be careful out there.